Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing fantastic today. This is Brett Hadlock, TN Artist, and I want to thank you for joining me for what's going to be a little bit different of a painting than you've seen probably uh, here lately. But I, I, what I want to do here is showcase some of the things that you can do with either Rebel 5 or Rebel 6, um, can do with Pro. I'm going to be using Rebel 6 Pro because that's what I have, and there's a couple of things here and there that I'm going to use that are Rebel 6 Pro only, but I'm going to do my best to point out how to do those if you've got Rebel 5 uh, and want to do it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take advantage of some of the things that Rebel can do that other software can't. And one of those things to begin with is going to be the watercolor media and playing around with it and to create this different kind of scene. And the main reason I want to do this is just to kind of show you how if you're, um, you know, like you say you can't draw or whatever, then you gives you a chance to play around with some colors and play around to get some different effects. And it might give you an idea or two to try a different way, even if you're not wanting to create the same type of painting that I'm creating here. But hopefully you'll follow along and hopefully you'll uh, play around a little bit and um, have some fun. OK, so I already have the majority of my layers set up over here. So let me kind of walk you through this. So I have, as you can see, this is going to be a uh, planet and star kind of scene. So uh, we're going to do a gas cloud that we're going to mess around with and some stars and uh, then a sun and planets and that kind of stuff. So I have these layers set up over here and we'll probably add a few and condense them and add a few and condense them just because I think you can get some really cool effects that way. But most of these are set to normal. The ones that aren't are, I've got it labeled here. So like this one is set to color dodge. And this one is set to overlay. And you'll see how we use those later. But the rest of these are all set to normal with the pigment, uh, color pigment on. If you don't have Pro, I don't believe you'll have access to the color pigments. I actually went through and did this painting before just to kind of play around and test it. And you don't have to have the color pigments. Okay, so if you don't have Pro not a big deal. Okay. You can still get some nice effects because of the way we're going to be doing this. Uh, I have the pigments on because it does kind of change the look of it and the feel of it. As far as uh, some of the colors, it gives them a little bit more rich of a feel, but again, not super critical. Okay. It's just kind of one of those. It's like, Oh, that looks a little better versus that one kind of thing. Okay. So what I have here is a 10 by eight canvas. Okay. This is uh, set to black. And I have rough paper here. I'm actually going to switch over to the white simple, I think. And you can use any of these if you want to. It depends on how much texture you want to have that will affect some of the final results that were what we're doing. But I have it black, um, which I can change here if I wanted to. But I'm just going to sit here. It texture scale is 100%. So if you do use any of these, I would leave it at 100 and go from there. So we're going to do that. The colors that I'm using here, the color set is a default color set that you can download from Rebel. Uh, Escape Motion's website, and it's in their free assets, and this is basically the oil color set. So that way it's all laid out here, and you know exactly which one is which, and you can see that. And just because this is the oil color set, it does not affect anything as far as using these other uh, tools. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start on this bottom one with the gas cloud, and we're going to grab the watercolor brush. OK, and I'm going to stick with primarily the spatter brush. Uh, some of these I may bounce around between all of these, uh, but we're going to primarily stick with those and maybe a little bit of granulation, which comes with it. If you don't have six, you won't have the granulation, but you'll have some spatter brushes that you can use, which is one of the reasons why I'm sticking with it. OK, um, the tools and all that. The only other thing I did was in visual properties. I have gone in and increased the drip size all the way and everything else I left normal. Okay. So uh, all the rest of these are the default. The only thing I changed was this drip size right there. Okay. We will be using some of my stencils. So the stencils that we'll be using, if you don't have those, you may want to go over to Gumroad and get them. We'll be using some of these celestial stencils that we have here to uh, play around, mainly these because it's, uh, we're going to use this moon one that I created and these rising planets and space and stars ones. Okay. So we'll be using those to help create effects. You can definitely do this without those. Uh, it just makes your life easier to do it, to use them. So if you don't want to get this mega pack, um, then you don't have to. Okay. So let's start with the gas cloud. I'm going to pause diffusion 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and select some of these colors. And for right now, I'm going to mainly stick in this area right in here. So some of these oranges and reds and blues. Okay. Not really going to dive into the greens, not really going to dive too much into the yellows. All right. So just mainly in this area here. So let's kind of grab maybe this turquoise. And what I want to do is I want to just kind of create the back and forth of some color. And I'm going to click over here and go even more intense and really saturate this. Okay. So that I've got an interesting kind of feel and I'm just letting this spatter across. And I'm going to grab this cadmium orange and maybe come down through here a little bit and just kind of come across as well. And I'm just using my mouse. I'm not even using my pen at the moment. I'm just using my mouse to kind of come across. And I'm just going to splatter in some of these maybe brighter colors. Um, we'll go with the cadmium red deep and kind of bring that in as well. This blue, throw it in through here. Um, cobalt violet. So this part, this is really play around. This can be any color that you want. These are just the ones I'm going with. So it can be any of that. Okay, so I'm just trying to play around with some of these colors and we're going to adjust these and kind of mix and match and play around here and there as we go through stuff. I'm going to throw in some little bit different darker colors on the outside. So I want to kind of keep this band through here a little brighter. So I'm going to just throw in some different stuff here. Um, I don't want whites, so these whites will be allowed to blend in. I don't want whites for a reason. Uh, the main reason being is that we're going to have stars and stuff in the background. So I want those stars to be uh, white. Okay. So now that I've got that there, I'm going to come over to my water tool. All right, so we've got a decent amount of water there. And I'm going to up here at the top, right along here, I'm going to just kind of splatter that across. All right. And then just kind of randomly hit here and there and maybe a little bit on the bottom. And then I'm going to come in here with the eraser. I mean, not the eraser, I'm sorry, the sponge. And I'm going to go with this vertical texture here and just kind of hit it everywhere really random. I am not so much planning this out. I'm just kind of randomly throwing it in to get some textures. Okay. Maybe even throw in a few uh, splatters where it gives some dry spots. Okay. And then this. So I've got it here. Okay. And I'm going to turn off the water. So now all I have here. I am going to let this diffuse and I'll probably speed it up just because it takes a minute with my recording software and everything to get all this. Because remember, each one of these spatters, it's got to calculate what it's doing. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt my board so that everything is designed to run down. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit so that it's more like that. So it's not as vertical. And I'm going to unpause and then let this diffuse. So hang on. Now, one thing I'm going to do is this is kind of running and changing. If I see colors I don't like, I'm probably going to just spatter some color on top of it. Okay, so that's what you're going to see me doing here off and on. All right. Um, but what we're trying to get are some of these kind of wispy flowing areas here and there. So we're going to have these kind of wisp down. So you'll see me throw some colors in. Again, totally up to you what colors you want this. This could be rainbow color bright for all that matters. All right, so let me just kind of play around with this. I'm grabbing the grunge brush because I want to smear some of these around a little bit. I put it on four.
Okay, so what I've done now, as you can tell, is I've gone in and softened a lot of this because I want to keep some areas where I can see the streak, some areas where I got it, but a lot of it had kind of a almost a pixel pixelation to it, and I didn't want that. So um, that's why I went in and softened it with the brush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come over here and I'm going to duplicate this layer. Okay, and I'm going to grab the water. Okay, and change spatter and kind of come in drop some here and there like so and I'm going to turn this way down here and turn off water and I'm just gonna spritz areas that I think need more running Now, if I have any areas that get away from me, kind of like this just did, I'm just going to pause it. And then I'm going to grab one of these spatter erasers, erase it. Okay, now that also erases some of the water down here too. All right, and then once I've got that erased, I'm going to just softly blend it back ever so. But some of these, like I like this right here, so I'm going to leave that a little bit. All right, so... I was saying I'll leave this here. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. And just kind of come back and soften these real quick with the smudge tool. Or the blending tool, I mean. I'm sorry. Not the smudge, the blending tool. So that way, it is softened up. Helps do that. So that's got that. Let's see, I'm going to unpause the diffusion, let this run a little bit, and I may even bring it back up so it kind of runs back against itself and breaks up, and just kind of add some textures here and there for these to kind of go around. This is a great way to do like Aurora Borealis stuff too, by the way. So, but the point of this is letting the randomness happen. Okay, so that's what you need to do for this is just embrace it and let it kind of happen. Switch this to eraser and erase some of the pigment here and there. Now when you do that, it erases the water too. Okay. Wet the whole layer, because I want those to soften out naturally. I'm going to come up here to the color dodge. So for here, I'm going to take maybe some of this blue and bring it down a little bit like so. Maybe just go back to some of that blue. Go across. I want this to diffuse out.
when you get it to it, like if you think it's an interesting look, pause diffusion. Okay, I like that. I think that's got a really cool look to it. It's dynamic. It's got some interesting textures, but it's not overwhelming. But to me, it's kind of an interesting thing to look at. All right, so I'm going to keep this like it is. I'm going to go ahead and dry the layer. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to merge this one down. And I'm also going to dry the layer like so. So that's got us some really interesting things. You can play around with it as much as you want to soften as much as you want to. That's fine. It's your painting. But the important thing with this is let the program do what it does. Let it play around with the uh, chaos of the water diffusion. All right. So the next thing I want to do is come right here to stars. I'm going to grab one of my stencils. This one is the space one. It just has a little bit finer stars on it. I'm going to go to the airbrush and I'm going to grab white and bring this up. I've got the soft airbrush chosen and I'm just going to lightly circle in some stars with one pass. Then I'll go back over a few areas here and there to make them brighter. Take that one away. You can see how that already adds some stuff. Now this one is the stars uh, and it has some brighter, uh, larger, I mean, uh, stars. I'm going to go along this middle section really heavy and really throw in some stuff in here. And then maybe a few more here and there that are brighter. And then just really softly go over these. And I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to come up to this color dodge and I'm going to grab like maybe this blue throw in some color here and there that color dodges and kind of changes a little bit of it that just gives some interest it's subtle but it's kind of a cool thing And so you can see how it adds in some different looks here and there of the stars. So again, very subtle, but kind of cool. All right, so that gives it a really interesting effect. Now what I want to do is I want to do a rising planet. So that is one of the stencils I have here. And I want this to be... I've got to zoom out so I can move this stencil around. This is one thing I wish that they would change and rebel is giving me more stencil control because I really love using my stencils. Right, so we're going to have this kind of rising across right there. We're going to do this one right here. Now I'm doing this right now because I want to give me kind of an idea of where it's going to be. All right. So I'm going to also border this. And we're going to go kind of a... Uh, let's go with kind of this golden yellow color. I want this to be kind of you know, crazy looking planet. So now I'm going to select the oil brush. I'm going to come to grunge. Um, you can use a bunch of these others. You could even, if you've got the mega pack, you've got some of my stencils here. You could use, I mean, not stencils, but brushes. You could use those. You could use some of the different oil and acrylic brushes that they have uh, with default four, five, or six. It does not matter. Right now, what I want to do is just kind of throw this in here. And that's going to give us the beginnings of where the planet's going to go. Then I'm going to take that away. I'm going to bring my moon in here and I'm going to, whoops, double click by accident is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and center this and then just roughly match up the arch. Does not have to be. And I'm going to grab here, which is right there, if you want to use it. But let's uh, actually, you know, I'm going to jump this over to blue, kind of a bluish purple. Let's go to the blue. And now, what I'm going to do is down here in this part, I'm just going to scrub it in real quick. And then up here, I'm going to just kind of tap. Okay, and bring that across. I'm going to switch to four. 
and I'm going to just kind of tap this into here. Like so. You can add as much or as little texture as you want. Feel free. Your painting. You're making all the worlds. It's your worlds. Like that. You can make this an Earth planet. You know, like a, a Class M planet. Um, however you want blue to it, just to kind of maybe give that hint of something. And again, go back to four. When you select a color, it switches back to the last one that you were using that had color that you could paint with. So like if it, you had it on one, it'll go back to one. If you had it on two, it'll go back to two and so forth. Now all I'm doing is just tapping and letting this kind of smudge itself. And then I'm going to go in and just kind of smudge it even more. I want this to be kind of an interesting looking planet. Now I've got that on there. I've got some of those colors. I've got some paint smeared around. I'm going to go back to my airbrush. I'm going to come back to black. I'm going to go up in size. I'm just going to kind of cross it. That's going to capture some of the texture from the stencil. So we've got kind of a cool looking planet. All right. Um, so we'll leave that there. Hit period to come back to the full thing. Now I'm going to come back down here. Let me bring that down so it's not as distracting. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to come into where it says sun. And we're going to start laying in some of the sun. I'm going to grab this bright yellow and I'm going to just kind of paint this in under here. And there were naturally holes in the paint from that stencil. Which is going to light this up down here. To me that's cool because it looks almost like there's cities or something down there. So it gives just kind of the extra effect. So all I'm doing is just letting this blow past. The, okay, so we got a little bit of a glow there. I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab this color. and I'm going to come up here and just barely over it. Paint just a bit. Arch with a little bit of a, for lack of a better word, a little bit of a nipple right up there. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of this white and kind of highlight into that just ever so slightly. Okay. I've got that where it looks like it's maybe kind of creasing across. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this orange here. The edges, because I want it to kind of hint at this turning this orangish color. Okay. Put you back down into this layer. And this is just kind of a back and forth. Okay, like so. Now I'm going to go back to this white. I'm going to put it right here. There's so that that becomes really like so. Okay, now I'm going to come up here to my overlay. I'm going to take this same white and I'm really going to go along the edges here and capture that across like so. So that's going to give that feeling of like the sun or stars just kind of cresting over the planet and we're on the back side of it as it's coming through. Now one of the things we can do here is we can um, come right here and then do uh, some light streaking out. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can do it either freehand if you want to do it that way and just kind of come around like so, coming always to this point and out. Okay. And you can build this up as much or as little as you want. You can also use the selection tool and make triangles 
and have them come back and forth and build it out that way. The important thing is always from this spot out. And some of those can really kind of cast off. Come around. Like so. Okay. Now the next thing I would suggest doing with this is to take some of this harshness out. You can use the filter. And this is for 6 Pro. Gaussian Blur. And really filter it all the way up to like 100 if you want. Uh, and really soften it. Okay, you can come down to the Sun one, go back to Filter, Gaussian Blur. It's going to have this here, but it's not actually affecting it until you move it. But it'll keep the last number that you're at, so that way if you wanted to apply the same number. Same thing again. Now, if you don't have 6 and you can't do this with this, then I'm going to show you how to do it on your own because I'm actually going to go back and soften some of this some more. So you can do this without the Gaussian Blur. It just makes it a little bit quicker to use the Gaussian Blur. All right. So now I'm going to come over here to my Blend. I'm on Soft. Okay. I'm going to increase this. And I'm going to ever so slightly soften this. I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to soften. I'm going to come up here to the light. I'm going to drag it out from the middle. And that's going to give me a really kind of a cool cresting effect. And then soften up here again, going the same directions, but softening. And if you keep just kind of going over these, it'll get softer and softer. I'm actually going to well, I'm going to erase some of that because it's a little too much. All right, now see we've got these overlapping here. So I'm going to come down here to the gas cloud. It's just because the colors are transparent. All right, and I'm going to erase those with the soft eraser. Because I want those to be brightened out where you can't really see it. Okay. Stars kind of do the same. Make them a little bit darker. Right here around this, that's just going to give it the feeling that this is even brighter. Okay. Some of this I think I'm going to go ahead and erase back a little bit more. Not on that one. A little bit of an overspray there from something. Must have been when I did that first planet. I didn't soften it. Soften that back. Kind of spread that out a little bit. Shift and drag to get a perfect circle. I'm going to bring this up. I'm actually going to redo this for a second because I don't like how that's looking and it's being kind of troublesome. So I've got this here. I'm going to do Shift Control I and delete. And I'm going to delete and I'm going to delete. Control D. Back down here, and I'm going to kind of redo some of this because I just didn't like how that looked. One of the great things about digital, right? I wanted to have that cresting feel, but it was just kind of a weird 
look to it, so I didn't like it. I'm just kind of softening this and then coming back. Tomaj, Tomaj. Say something before I change my mind. So something like this. Add that on the wrong layer. Let me grab this. Drag it above it. Just want a little bit of that. Let's soften it. And so, oops. There we go. Now I just want to add a little bit. Coming straight out. That just kind of cool arching over. Effect. And again, you play with it how you like. streakiness out. Alright, so I think I'm going to come back down here to planets. Actually, I think I'm going to come up here on top of this one. I'll grab my moon stencil again, and I'm going to click on it and tell it to border it. To bring it down. About here. So we'll just throw that in there. A little bit. It's yellow. Airbrush. Just kind of lightly airbrush. Giving it a little bit brighter. A little bit of blue. A little bit of white. If you wanted to give it even more of a 3D, you could put more of a shadow coming off of this. So like, for example, if you wanted to put one here and then grab, come right to the edge, like so, or airbrush tool, grab a little bit of this darker color. D. And soften it. No, we don't. It's a little too big for his britches, is what he is. Alright, there we go. So that's pretty subtle, but it's there. Alright. So, some really cool ways that you can get effects. Some really cool things that you can do with. Um, playing around with just the lighting and the layers. This is a lot of stuff that you can do in Rebel 5 or 6. Um, but a different thing, but it can, you know, these could become clouds. You can mess around with those. It could be background and stuff. But I just wanted to do something a little different and show you some different things that you can play around with. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, would love to hear your feedback on it. See what you thought. So thanks for watching.